Hi guys, this is gonna be part 4 of the chain logger project. I was about the boat last weekend to get started on sanding and prepping the surfaces inside the chain logger. But I also had to shoot the video showing you guys the beta version of my uh, tiny clothing logger. So by the time I actually got to sanding it was already kind of late afternoon and there was no way I could finish before I needed to head back to the house. But this weekend I am gonna finish sanding and I am gonna get the first pieces glassed in. Hopefully. <laughs> before doing that there are a few things I want to mention. Firstly, I'm now caught up with the uh, backlog I had of videos and that means that this video is going to be as real time as I'm probably ever going to get. I'm recording this video on the uh, 19th of April and um, I guess within the next say, 8 hours or so you should be able to view this video on YouTube. Now personally, I don't care about how real time other people's videos are, that's not really important to me. But my own videos, being as close to real time, are kind of important to me. And that's because you guys leave such wonderful suggestions and comments. So that's a big help to me because then I can change things before moving on to the next step in the project. So thank you for those lovely comments, guys. The second thing I want to mention is that on the first video in this series, there was a lot of comments regarding draining the uh, chain locker directly to the bilge. Well. I, to be quite honest, I didn't even know that was a possibility. <laughs> I didn't know that was done aboard such small boats as most of our sailboats are. Certainly around these parts, the most common solution is to drain the chain locker directly overboard. And uh, there are a few different ways of doing that. I've just taken a quick stroll around the marina and uh, checked out some of the boats. And um, well, as you can see, there are a few different ways of doing it. Some boats have a hole drilled directly in the uh, bow of the boat and some drain them through the side of the hull. But I have yet to find a single boat in this marina that actually drains its chain logger to, the, to, the, to its bilge. But enough about that, let's get on with the sanding. Woohoo! Just to get you guys caught up, this is what I did last weekend. I put the pieces in place. And then I used a sharpie to trace the outline of the pieces onto the hull so that I could then remove the pieces and I'd still know where to sand. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those fancy sanders that actually comes with an attachment that allows me to hook it up to a vacuum cleaner. But hooking up a sander to a vacuum cleaner actually takes care of a lot of the dust that's otherwise going to be suspended in the air. So what I've been doing for the past year is just to use a bit of duct tape to stick these two parts together. And that actually seems to work quite well. Once I start both my vacuum cleaner and my sander at the same time, it's gonna get really loud in here. So I get to wear these sexy things. How you doing? the glamour of being a boat owner. <laughs> there are some pretty deep low spots on the inside of the hull and if I was actually to sand those flush I'd lose about two millimeters of my hull thickness so I don't want to do that. What I'll do instead is I'll sand those areas by hand and then I'll use some of the thickened epoxy I'm going to be mixing up anyways for the fillets to fair that surface. I am using a structural filler, so I think it's okay, but I'm no expert. And unless you know it's okay to do this, I don't think you should, because I'm not 100% sure. I'm like 99% sure that this is going to be okay. Before mixing up epoxy, I'm just going to give the inside of the hull a quick wipe down using some grease remover. I've cut all of the fiberglass I need to get started on these first two pieces. I've also cut this piece of cardboard which I'll use to make my fillets. 
These aren't really going to be nice fillets, but they will make life easier for me when I'm going to lay up the fiberglass. My trusty dog bowl, which was featured in uh, part 3 of this series, which was actually never really a dog bowl, is back at my house, so uh, I'll have to make do with this tray right here. And I know it's going to be a little bit difficult mixing this up because it's got square corners, but I'll just have to make sure that everything gets mixed thoroughly. So I picked this up yesterday because I knew I was running low and uh, that's quite fortunate because I have just used the last of the epoxy in my old cans. Unfortunately I by mistake picked up this 206 which is the slow hardener and I normally use the 205 which is the fast hardener due to the low temperatures around here. Luckily I just checked West Systems website and it's okay to mix 205 and 206 so uh, whew. Okay, that's it. The first two pieces are glassed in and the epoxy is curing nicely. Now I'll have to wait until the next weekend where I can then again swing by the boat and uh, glass in the last two pieces for the chain logger, hopefully. But that's it for this video guys. See you! Yurkul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. To be notified about new content, please click subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I suggest you check out the introduction playlist. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment.